and a warm welcome to the 13th episode of Aratio Autistic Alien. I'm very happy that you're here with me today. And I think it's super cool that this is the 13th episode, which is the number of Lilith, so the wild aspect of the female. And it is also the episode where I will talk about dancing, which is the love of my life. So the reason why I chose dancing in the wider sense as a topic of this week's podcast is that through everything I experienced, I felt like I lost contact to what I really love doing. Yeah, like when I got divorced with Ferdy, I had this moment in my life where I realized that I put a lot, a lot, a lot of my effort into my work and into my business, but I also kind of did that because I didn't know what my hobbies were. Like, I remember that I liked to read as a child and I remember that I was always very creative, but it wasn't like there anymore, or at least I felt that, yeah. And But I still was going to parties like almost every week and really dancing my heart out. And now that I'm on the journey of really reclaiming what is mine, which is kind of, I feel like maybe what we do at the age of 35, more or less, really understanding what it is that makes our heart beat faster with all different choices we have, how to spend our time. And what I realized is that all the time that I felt like Maybe I forgot about my hobbies or I lost myself or what I really loved doing. I actually wasn't right. Like I still was doing it, but I think it's a very good example on how we look very far for who we are when actually who we are is always right there. Yeah. So like, oh my God, what are my hobbies? You know, like sometimes I feel like we have these identity crises and then we we need to kind of identify ourselves with certain aspects of humanity, no? Like I know people who have midlife crises and then they have to buy a certain car because they have to or they want to belong that group of people that has this certain car. It's rarely about the car. It's mostly about like belonging to a certain kind of people are belonging to a certain aspect like when when I was in this phase and I was like okay what are my hobbies it was kind of like a search for identity or belonging where do I belong because you know like the things you do will connect you to the people that maybe are your tribe because they like to do the same thing right so yeah that was very interesting for me to see because I have this like executive dysfunction so sometimes it's really hard for me to do things like although I know they're good for me it's really hard to do them and it's easier if somebody is around that does them too and I believe that a lot of people actually have that they say it's very a a very neurodivergent thing but I believe a lot of people have that because most people I know have to go outside to a gym to actually do their sports or they have to go outside to a class to actually do their exercise right so and also, like, I, th- I feel like we all want to be part of a tribe. We all have this need. And by doing things we like, or at least maybe we think we like, or we, like, just say we have to do them, we also put ourselves close to other people who do the same thing, right? So, yeah, it was very interesting for me to understand that the things that I always loved doing, I was kind of always doing them. And I also didn't have a lot of executive dysfunction there. Which brings me back to the topic of today, which is dancing. So what for me really interesting is that, you know, like for around 15 years, I was dancing at raves mostly and also at home. And like one year ago, I stumbled upon like shamanic healing dancing. I also was already practicing as a shaman. And of course, I danced for myself and did a lot of healing through that. But I wasn't really aware of it being that big of a healing modality in other tribes. So I 
attended a ceremony, a, a pure dance ceremony last autumn and now again this weekend, past weekend. And it's just amazing what you can do with dance because what I realized is that, you know, when we are in a normal like healing setting, there is not a lot of acknowledgement for the sickness, right? Um, so you, you have a certain illness, no matter if it's psychic or physical, and you go to a doctor or to a therapist and the main focus lies on getting rid of the illness, right? And that's not really how shamans work. So what I realized that dancing is a really good way of simply, first of all, acknowledging the pain and dancing it out, not having to rationalize it because the, the rationalizing of our own needs and of our own value was the thing that broke us in the first place. So that's not the place where we will find healing. Yeah, like science has actually shown that um, Therapy that is done via talking or painting or writing has a 30% chance of being effective. And dancing therapy in front of other people that witness your process has an 80% chance of being effective in healing terms. And I am super sure that this comes from the acknowledgement that lies in somebody else witnessing what you express. Yeah, because, you know, like if when we feel ill or, or we have like this trauma or whatever and we go and we heal it and all we want to do is get rid of it, we don't acknowledge its value and we don't acknowledge the pain that it created. And that's the first step, yeah, to really give that part that felt lost, that felt hurt, an expression first and not an expression that is drawn or written or whatever because that's already going through the mind again. No, an expression that's purely physical, yeah, either through dancing or through dancing and sounding, like giving noises. This is such deep healing and I know that like a lot of people will have issues with being witnessed at least at my age, I'm, I'm usually one of the youngest in these ceremonies because I know that a lot of like people who are maybe my age or a little bit younger, they have a lot of body issues. Yeah, so they prefer to dance in like dark caves where nobody can see them when they dance expressively. Because, you know, what I also perceived is that like the most raves I was at, people didn't really dance in my opinion. And I never really understood what was the difference. And now I understand it. It's that, you know, like, I feel like most people dance how they feel it would look good to the music. Yeah. And they don't dance how they feel it feels right. So these are two very different kinds of expression. Yeah. One is very mental. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. If like, oh, that's a smooth, that's like, it's very male, right? Oh, that's a smooth beat. I will like move my hips like that and it will look good because I'm wearing this skirt, right? And that's very, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's nice. But then there is the Lilith, like the wild aspect of dancing where we don't give a fuck how we look and we don't give a fuck how we sweat or if we lose our clothes while dancing because it's just not about any kind of how we look it's simply about how we feel and what we want to express through that feeling and yeah like the breakthroughs i reached through dancing in a trance state are like beyond measurement it's like really such a deep way of getting things out of your system without rationalizing them and then being more embodied afterwards every time simply because you arrive fully in your body and of course also because there are a lot of endorphins and serotonins in your head uh, which is also healing yeah and yeah like the way i do it in ceremony with 
with Yaakov, the shaman that I like visit the ceremonies. Um, it's very strong as well because we are all together here. Yeah? So sometimes there are like 170 people and it's so much energy, like so much collective energy and this deep understanding that everybody goes through the same things. You know, they have different faces and they, they are quite different sometimes in experience, but the main stories that people tell themselves are all the same. Yeah, and no matter how we look, no matter how old we are. And the thing is that I know that like this kind of ceremony, I feel it's it's very hard to make my people or the people in my age understand the value of that. Simply because we are like way more inflicted within our bodies and we have way more bodily issues than the generations before us had because they were not as influenced from the whole modeling thing and all that as we were. So I was so happy when I realized that I can actually combine this into my own thing, which I did like last November. And since then I trained it and like structured it a little bit more. And I like it kind of tried it out with my friends if it works for this too is that you know when whenever we hear music there will be a certain thing of our body like how we want to move yeah it's like there is a rhythm already and what i wanted to try is to not use a rhythm so to actually dance without music and just giving the body the freedom to really express what it wants right now through movement and being its own beat and it's amazing what that does so yeah i just i feel so blessed because it's kind of like moving chi through your body it's it's a very shamanic technique so to speak but i know that it's also possible for normal people to use it is to really just like be there in silence and listen to your body and not be like, you know, like, oh, I have to meditate, I don't have to think. No, just take deep breaths and try to breathe into your feet. So your consciousness really goes down into your feet and you're like fully in your body. And then just see what wants to move. Yeah, so maybe your fingers want to move. Or your toes want to move. Or your hips want to move. You know, and you just see, hey, buddy, how are you today? What do you want to do? How do you want to move? What do you want to express right now? Maybe you just want to hug yourself. Maybe you don't want to do anything. Maybe you just feel stupid. That's also possible. But then again, when you feel stupid, try to make a beat with your body, you know? Because what actually feels stupid right now is your ego. That feels like it has to act a certain way or look a certain way to be valid. Yeah, it's not your soul. Your soul will never feel like it looks stupid. Yeah, so if you feel like you look stupid when you just dance without a sound, you make your sound yourself. And then you move to that, you know, and it's really about letting go, letting your thoughts go. Whenever you feel like you look stupid, let it go. Breathe into it. Act even more stupid because nobody is seeing you. Yeah? And that's how you really befriend your own body. And that's how you really come to terms with having a physical experience on Earth. Yeah? Because, you know, like, I feel that a lot of us feel burdened by their bodies as well is because we never really built a friendship with them. We never really built a relationship with our bodies, yeah? We never really made having a body really much fun, yeah? And I feel like music is fun. Movement is fun. We like to move. When humans don't move, that's a sign of depression, yeah? Because we are physical beings. We like to move. And I can tell that from myself as well. When I'm doing good, I'm not stuck. But when I'm not doing good, I will like have very repetitive days and I will not go outside. And that's just, you know, but what, what can I do then? 
I dance with the depression and I really use my body to express how I feel right now. I feel like a slug. I'm so slow and I'm so slimy and like my bad thoughts are all over me. And guess what? I do that for 10 minutes and I'm not depressed anymore. Why? Because most of our states just need acknowledgement. And then maybe sometimes they need expression. And that doesn't mean that I have to go to a therapist and talk about that. No, that's handing my power to somebody else. Oh, please acknowledge that. Yeah, and I will be forever addicted to you to acknowledge my experience. But the thing is that the only one that really needs to acknowledge your experience is yourself. And this is a very good way to do it. Yeah, by just like letting your own thoughts witness what your physical body says and acknowledge the pain and acknowledge the hurt and not try to spiritually bypass your heart anymore. Because everything that's stored there will spill out over your life un unless you really dance it out. <laughs> yeah, so to me it's just so interesting, you know, to find out that something that I really like, since I can move, I dance. And I dance wherever I am. I think my, most of my neighbors think I'm crazy because I dance at the bus stop when the music is good. I dance in the bus when the music is good. I dance at the train station when the music is good. And I think it's really nuts that a lot of people think that I'm on drugs when I do that. Because that just really shows how much we are stuck in our heads, you know. When I do that in Africa, nobody will fucking care. Like, if they would react, they would be happy. I've experienced that. So, and like, even if I would do that more down south in Europe, nobody would care. But here in Switzerland, people think, oh, she must be on drugs. She's dancing on the street you know and that's why I love so much that this is the 13th episode because you know Lilith is all about dancing on the street when everybody judges you for it being wild and natural and sassy when everybody judges you for it and just let them judge and just let them be because it's my life and if I want to dance on the street, you have no right to judge me. Yeah. And how sad that you think I'm on drugs, because that just means that the only time you would dance on the street is if you were on drugs. That's what you are saying with that. You know, whatever we think about others is actually what we think about ourselves. So people that think I'm on drugs when I'm dancing on the street are actually thinking, oh, my God, I would have to be on drugs to do that. Yeah. And so dancing also there is like a, such a beautiful way to get out of this collective shaming. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like when I look around in Switzerland, people are so stiff. Yeah, they're stiff to the bone. And I feel it has to do with them not dancing and not being smooth and not celebrating life. You know, it's too much left brain wave, too little right brain wave. And we can change that to, through repetitive movements. And the thing is that, you know, I really love raves and I really love all of that, but it doesn't have the same healing effect because there is just so much going on at the same time that kind of reassures the trauma. Yeah. So like if we dance, but then we take cocaine, we kind of free these emotions, but then we freeze them again. So we kind of repeat the traumatizing every weekend again and again and again. And we actually do the same when we ingest um. LSD when we do not consciously work with it. Yeah, you should not actually take LSD in a room full of people that are on cocaine and dance. That's not, it won't have a healing effect, or at least it won't have the same healing effect as if you would just like do it on your own in a forest. Yeah. And anyways, I realized that like the biggest and strongest effect on that from dancing is when you have not ingested any drugs. Simply because then you go from your normal state of mind to the trance and you go back. And that's what you will remember. You will remember how you took off, how you went on that witch flight and came back. When you ingest drugs, your mind will always say itself it was the drugs. It was not me. 
he was not the dancing and everything that happens while being in that different state of mind on psychedelics or non-psychedelics it doesn't matter it stays there it doesn't get embodied yeah so i don't want to say psychedelics are bad not at all I, i'm just saying that why do it with substances when we can do it with our bodies and we are like i got the biggest highs ever in my life from dancing sober so and there is breath work like there are so many ways of like really like reaching different states of mind meditation as well where we don't need to ingest substances and what what the beauty about them is is just that they are so much longer lasting because they stay with us yeah they, that's what the body has really experienced it didn't shift into an altered state of mind through like let's say even like you know like ingesting substances to change your part point of view is kind of violent because it's like hey body you take this and there you go you have no choice anymore and when we dance the body has the power the body has the choice and the body has the energy yeah so yeah like i just i really hope this this episode made sense i just want to talk about I wanted to talk about dancing <laughs> because I was so blown away like already last time when I was there but now again and yeah I just love what it does with me like I set some intentions before these ceremonies and of course I work on them but there are so many more layers that are being worked on without me consciously knowing and that's the beauty I love about it yeah and it's just meditational dancing there is no homeopathy there is no like no external source except the music and you and the shaman and the people around you so yeah and i just like for me it's like the the strongest tool of self-healing i found so far and that's why i also like now that i studied and tested it i offer once a week i offer shamanic dance classes to the members of enzoilia because i feel like we all could dance more <laughs> and it will be over skype so everybody that doesn't want to be seen can just like dance for themselves and just see me as i do the instructions and yeah i'm really much looking forward to it because i feel like this is something i did all my life and i never even like considered it becoming a job or anything like that it was just something that after the last ceremony in autumn i was like oh my god like some of this i already do but i do it differently and then i really dove into how i already do it because with me it's a lot of times that i just already do things and then suddenly i understand what their effect is yeah or what they are like i just started hand poke tattooing i didn't know that there was a word for that yeah i just took a normal needle like a sewing needle and some normal ink and i tried it and it worked <laughs> so that's kind of like what i did with dancing now too i already did that for such a long time and now i'm understanding more and more what depth it has in really embodying yourself you know and how is this related to this podcast i really feel less autistic since last weekend yeah like there are so many things that do not trigger me as much anymore because i really feel like i have arrived in my body more fully yeah that doesn't mean that i'm not still autistic or like the diagnosis will start end of this month but i feel so much more embodied and i feel so much more at peace with everything that has happened and everything that will happen that i actually have like this very positive outlook on life although my life situation hasn't really changed and i really i really believe that this is the power of dancing and of really diving into your past and into your future and expressing everything that there is every worry every sorrow every trauma and then getting back to the moment and realizing oh these are all just stories and i i came to peace with these stories so here i am fully embodied in the here and now and now let's continue with all of that so yeah we will dance once a week on wednesdays via skype and i will teach you if you're a member of enzoilia how to really embody more of your own energy and the aim of these dance classes is simply to really build a loving beautiful relationship with your own physical body 
And that's why, like, I'm really like, of course, it would be nicer to meet everyone and dance together. But I know that a lot of people have inflictions. So I believe the best way to do it is via Skype, where everybody can turn off their cameras if they don't feel comfortable. And like, maybe like in half a year, somebody or something, we will all feel ready to like meet in person and do it like in person. Because, you know, the more you work with your body and the more you arrive in that body, the more you also are able to not dissociate when there are other people around you and you feel more comfortable within you. So you also feel more comfortable without and then you can also maybe go into a real space with real people and do the work. Yeah, but that's just like my tiny little goal that I want to do that at some point because I, I really love that. But yeah, for now it's via Skype and I would re be really happy if you joined us. And yeah, if you have any questions towards shamanic dancing or towards anything that I covered in this podcast, please feel free to reach out to podcast at dadachi.com. And yeah, I maybe want to conclude this episode with some knowledge or scientific knowledge, what happens during like repetitive movement repetitive sounding like mantra singing or something or repetitive drumming repetitive music in general so science has proven that you know usually your right brain r right brain half and your left brain half are not on the same wavelength so the right brain half will be in alpha and the left brain wave will be in beta and these two are kind of constantly, yeah, let's say fighting each other or they're like rubbing on each other, yeah? And usually one of them takes dominance over the other during the day. And this is the left brain wave and it's the beta brain wave. It's like about structure, about organization, about rational thinking. So everything that we need in the outside world as it, as it is built today. Yeah, not necessarily what we need when we live fully in nature, but necessarily what we need when we live in an unnatural system like we have right now. And what happens during trance is that the constant beating of the drum or the repetitive singing of mantras or the movement of the body actually make that the brain waves kind of synchronize themselves and at some point, the right brain wave will take over. So you enter an alpha state brain wave, which you also can, like they prove that people who do trans healing are in this state of brain wave or people who are in hypnosis are in this state of brain wave. So it's kind of like accessing the subconscious and then working there, which is much more effective than just working with consciousness. And that's why I believe that this is so much more healing than a lot of other things I tried because it's actually me with my body doing the synchronization. So I self empowerment myself to create this change in brain waves and I move to a more intuitive, the beta and alpha brain wave is way more intuitive. It's way more open. It's way more receiving. Yeah, so that's the state where we can have vision, where we can have new insights. And by going there simply through the movement of our own bodies and the beating of a drum gives us so much self assurance. And it's not bypassing the heart, it's rather bypassing the mind. Yeah. So for me, like a lot of times after sessions I do with myself, I'm kind of surprised of what comes up because it wasn't my intention. So when I'm dancing, I'm working on one subject and suddenly all these other subjects are cleared as well that are kind of related to that one subject. And that's because I work through my physical body and in all, everything that I have or that I suffer from is stored in my physical body. So when I work directly over the physical body, I don't only work on one subject, but I work on all the subjects that's related to them. Yeah, <laughs> I really hope that makes sense. And yeah, I hope this wasn't boring because I just, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that I kind of dove deeper into that subject of one of my childhood passions. And yeah, 
I I really love the effect it has on on us, especially in these times where so much people like dissociate more and more from their bodies. Yeah, like and it's all about looks. It's not about feels. So I feel like this is really a beautiful technique to liberate ourselves and become more authentic in our expression and in our like more loving in our self understanding. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I really hope this was fun for you and I can't wait for next week and I wish you a lovely, lovely weekend ahead. Much love and till soon. Bye bye.